In this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at defining vessel parameters. Uh, to start with, we've got the analysis file from video tutorial 2, which introduced task suspendability, and we've made some minor edits to the tasks in this operation. The mobilizing port task is set to be fully suspendable, the work offshore task set to be suspended at the vessel hold station, and finally the demobilized task is fully suspendable. We take a look at the assets tab, over here we can see that in this analysis there is one vessel defined and it has some parameters set up, some transit limits, some met ocean limits etc and port access limits. At the minute these definitions aren't particularly realistic and we're going to modify these in this tutorial. In the met ocean limits we specify an on station limit which is the met ocean requirements for the vessel to hold station we can specify the site arrival limits. These are the conditions which must be conformed to for accessing a site. And we can specify a site departure limit, which is the conditions which must be conformed to for departing the site. So arriving and departing is, for example, the jacking up and jacking down of a vessel. The arrival and departure limits must be more strict than the on-station limits, and Mermaid will prevent you from setting these outside of that range, as you can see when we drag these slides around. If we change to the tabular view rather than the graphical view, we can specify some limits for this vessel which are slightly more realistic. So we'll set its on-station limit to 2.5 metres of wave height, its arrival to 1.5 metres of wave height, and the departure to 2 metres. We'll also set up the wind limits, and we'll set these as being 15 for on station and 12 for both arrival and departure. We're required to set up durations for the arrival and departure operations when we, when we arrive and depart site. These default to half an hour and we'll leave these at half an hour for this analysis. We can also set up transit limits based on the wave height and at the minute this vessel is somewhat unrealistically limited to one meter per second to one meter. If we change the height limits, we'll put in five meters, the table automatically sorts, and we'll also put in three meters, and we'll specify the speed that the vessel can do up to these wave heights, so 6.5 meters per second and four meters per second. And if we switch back to the graph, we can see this here. So up to three meters of wave height, we can do 6.5 meters per second to five, we can do four meters per second. And beyond that, we can't transit, transit is totally limited. We can also set arrival and departure limits for the port. These are used in the same way as the outside limits, but when the vessel is accessing and departing its port, in this case, Falmouth. So if we just switch back to the tabular view, we can, we can type some limits into these, these boxes and we'll set three meters of wave height on arrival and departure and we'll set 15 meters per second on the wind for arrival and departure and we'll set the duration of these operations to be one hour for both. It's worth noting that the tidal elevation limit is a minimum value rather than a maximum value and that this is used to specify the amount of water required underneath the vessel to access and depart port. And if we scroll down, we can see that the charts have updated to, to summarise this data. As with the site, we can drag these markers if we, if we want to. You notice in the task diagram that no transits are specified on this operation. That's because Mermaid automatically determines when a vessel needs to transit based either on the changing location of work or because station keeping limits can't be conformed to and the vessel needs to seek shelter during a storm event. Whenever this occurs, Mermaid calculates a transit which considers a departure operation, the transit limits and an arrival operation and determines whether the arrival and departure it uses are site or port based on where the vessel is going from and going to. This automatic scheduling of transit means that the analysis is very flexible and we don't have to worry about when we're moving our vessel and, and where to. All we have to do is set up these limits to ensure that we have something that realistically models what we're trying to achieve. If we want more than one vessel in analysis, we can add a new vessel. 
We can also duplicate an existing vessel by clicking on this icon and we'll get a copy of the one we've already specified. Vessels need to have unique names, so let's just append a two to this name. And if we want to, we can color code our vessels. And if we just switch back to the task diagram, we can see the vessel icon on the task card. If we change the vessel that's assigned to construction vessel two, we can see that the orange vessel icon appears. And if we add the first construction vessel, we can see that two icons appear on the task card. We'll just delete construction vessel two and revert back to the initial state. And we'll just delete it from the analysis because we don't need that vessel. We can now run our analysis. We'll give it a description and hit run analysis. As always, we can see the progress bar indicating Mermaid moving through the years of MetOcean data. And the analysis is finished and we can go over to the Analyze tab and we can load up these results in the usual manner. Here we see a summary and as always, the summary table is populated automatically and we can add a duration exceedance chart and we can see the probability of exceedance of a given duration, which is on the X axis, the probability is on the Y axis. So we can see that exceeding 100 hours has a probability of about 70%. The median exceedance is around about 120 hours. This is the end of the tutorial on vessel limits and um, we've seen how we can define the different aspects of a transit and how Mermaid uses those values.